Keep it going for Chuck. Are we allowed to drop the F bomb here, Jen? Yes. Okay, good. I'm about to. Okay. All right, so there must be a few Roman Catholics in the house, right? Okay, okay. So we are about to enter the unusual world of Roman Catholicism, fundamentalism. I'm the oldest of 11 children, and my dad thought it was a really good idea if I, you know, have a vocation. And uh, I, I really wasn't very much interested in having a vocation, but I, I became an altar boy, and um, me and my brother were at this uh, Gwen, Gwen Mercy Academy school, a, a Catholic school, not too far from where we lived in uh, Ambler. And um, one of the really great things about being an altar boy in my school was that there were only two of us, me and my brother, and it got us out, out of class once in a while. So, um, so one day uh, I got a note sent to my math teacher, Miss Wong, that uh, Father Murphy would like me to come down and say mass with, uh, with him. And I was pretty sure my brother would, you know, meet me down there, and he too would be invited to come down. So um, I'm well, out of class in the in the middle of uh, my my grade school, and um, my principal comes upon me out of class in the middle of the day, and her name is Sister Mary Edward. And Sister Mary Edward was a Sister of Mercy, and I, I'm not sure if any of you are. Any of you familiar with Sisters of Mercy? A few of you? Okay. I'm pretty sure George Lucas went to a Roman Catholic school and had Sisters of Mercy <laughs> because they kind Darth Vader would have been a really good template for what they look like. They're dressed totally in black. This is back in the 60s, pre-Vatican Council, by the way. Um, and... Um, you know, all I can see is like her face. Uh, she's wearing what's called a, a, a wimple, a starched white bib in front of her, and her she's got this really heavy rosary wrapped around her waist that's um, kind of holding her habit, her black habit together. So she's covered in black. She's a very scary figure. We're all terrified of her, and her rosary is rattling through the hall as she's following me. <laughs> And she says to me, Charles, why are you out of class? And I said, well, you know, the priest asked me to come down for, uh, you know, to say uh, mass with him, sister. Oh, oh, okay, that's fine. So she starts to leave, and then she suddenly turns around very suddenly, and she says, uh, Charles, who is your best friend in school? And I, I was really taken aback by this question. I. I had to think for a minute, and you know, and I said, no, 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 not that guy, not that guy. Well, sister, um, my best friend doesn't go to this school. His name is Rick Smith. Well, why not? <laughs> well, sister, he's a, you know, he's a Lutheran. He goes to uh, public school. Well, you know, Charles, he won't be in heaven with us. <laughs> Now, this was my what the fuck moment that, <laughs> that kind of led to my career as a reporter. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I, I, my first thought was, what, you know, do, I don't know what version of hell you guys were introduced to when you were little, but the Roman Catholic version of hell was eternal flames. Like, you're going to burn for eternity. And I'm thinking to myself, sister, you, you think I'm going to heaven with you and my best friend is going to burn for all eternity because he doesn't go to church with us? What the fuck? I, no, I, I was too young to understand what that meant, but that was what I was thinking. And so I started to question everything after that. You know, well, uh, why are we you having to eat fish on Friday and this little wafer you're giving me is this is really the, the body of Jesus? I mean, why am I eating the body of Jesus? So I became a reporter because I felt like it was probably a good idea for me to start questioning authority. And, uh, you know, God bless you, sister. Wherever you are, 
you led me into a really nice career. Thank you. 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 Thank you.